20. How does somebody get a meeting with someone who's important? Like, what does that even look like? Because more times than not, you don't have the time. You don't, you don't have the bandwidth to just meet with somebody just because. So, you know, it, it's just an interesting concept, and I want to touch on it. If someone walked up to you today on the street, how do they capture your attention to make you even want to give them 10 minutes of your time? So, so I think it's a couple of things, quite honestly, and I, and I think back. So first of all, there are um, multiple people who have reached out to me or who I've actually um, sort of re-met who, uh-huh. will, who, will, who will remind me of moments that they reached out to me when they were younger and I engaged them. So I actually was, I was once at a meeting, my, my, this young brother, he's super talented and he's doing his thing right now, um, Antoine Phillips. He is, um, he's running a bunch of stuff over at Gucci. He's on the board at Gucci. He's like the young brother making it happen over at Gucci right now. I was in a meeting with him. I was, I was, I'm, I'm, I was consulting Essence. I was in a meeting at Gucci trying to pitch them on the Essence Festival. And they were telling us that we had to wait because they just hired this young brother or this, this new person. They didn't, they didn't use those words, right? We just hired this new person. We want to make sure he's in the meeting. And he sat in the meeting. And quite honestly, I, I was like, I was thinking that he was like the black guy in the meeting that was going to hate on the whole situation. Because, you know, sometimes when we get in that room, yep. we don't feel comfortable, right, giving it up to us because we, we don't want them thinking that we're that guy, right? That's right. Um, and, and ironically, um, the next day, he reached out to someone who worked at Essence and asked if he could ask them if it was OK to get my number. Uh, and then he called me and he reminded me that when he was interning at Calvin Klein, like right out of college, he had seen an article on me somewhere and he sent me an email and I responded. And he and I like actually spent like 45 minutes on the phone and I gave him a bunch of advice. Right. And so just imagine like. So the, 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 like the, the jewels there, right? The energy that you put out, especially when you're in the power situation, the energy that you put out could at some point come back to you, right? So you've got to be mindful of how you treat people because you want to make sure that when you meet that person again and they're across from that table and maybe they're in a situation that can make or break the deal you're trying to do, they have a fond memory of how you treated you them go. and how you made them feel, right? So that's one I mean, I think I, I think there's two other ways, right? So um, another way is just to find a qualified introduction, you know. Um, so even right now, you know, I find myself trying to do deals um, with CEOs or whomever it is, and I'll go and do a bunch of research on who's on the board because you know, nine times out of ten, there is a connection to a connection to a connection. Mm-hmm. And so if you really, really do your research, you'll come to find out because. There's things that connect us all. You know, I went to Rutgers University. I'm a member of Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity. There's all of these things that, you know, have been a part of my journey that you could probably find someone who knows me if you do your research. Um, But then last and definitely not least, you know, just be creative about how you engage people. You know, that's the, those are the things I remember the most. I remember a guy sent me, um, he had been calling me and calling me. And you know, this is back in the bad boy days. I and mean, you know, back back in bad when we were bad boy, we had 18 million meetings, 18 million jobs. It was just right. crazy. And so he had called me, you know, like 10 times. And I was always, you know, we would schedule a time to talk and I would always be doing something else. And then one day, um, the, the the receptionist says, Hey, there's a delivery here for you. And the guy has sent me like 10 boxes of Dunkin' Donuts co- uh, um, 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 donuts and a bunch of coffee. Before. And he was like, yo, take a break. Give, you, give me a whole team a break. Give me a call. And I was like, oh, that's dope. And so I called him up, right? So, like, you know, be creative, man. Like, I think that um, you should, people should be mindful of that every interaction with someone that you don't know gives you an opportunity to show them who you are and how you move, right? So if someone could get a sense into your creativity. And it was like silly things. Like even when I first started working with Jay, right? Because if you think about the timing of that, right? It, it was a time where Jay was actually coming back to the brand, right? He had, he had been, um, you know, he and, he, and, him and, he and Dane were in a very public separation. He was now the, the president of Def Jam. Everyone was unclear as to, was it Jay or was it Dame or could they be successful on their own? Um, and he had not really shown up in a significant way for the Rockaway brand. And so with Jay, um, you know, I, w- I wanted to make sure I did things that, that did not depend on him to show up. 
Um, I, I wanted to make the things that we were doing so hot that he felt that necessary to show up. So like one time I did a party during fashion week, um, I did it with Vanity Fair. Um, I had like this dope spot and you know, I had Pharrell and Naomi Campbell. I had all these people coming and I never even invited him. And so he calls me the morning of the event. He's like, yo, we having a party? I was like, oh yeah. He's like, oh, are you, oh I, I was like, yeah, I didn't tell you, right? He's like, yo, he's like, yo, why you ain't tell me? I was like, oh, you know, I know you're always busy, right? He's like, nah. And so he, he showed up and he stayed like way longer than he would have stayed, right? And so, you know, just got to be mindful of, of uh, just knowing that, you know, how you connect with people gives you an opportunity to show them who you are. Like, so if my, if my value proposition is taste level and, and, doing thi- and, not, and doing things on it, because I think when you work with those types of personalities, you know, everyone is pulling at them, right? They, in order to get the deal done, I would love to bring Puff into the meeting to get the deal done. Correct. But, and you said something very important, and, and this is, I really, and, and I, this is, I'm very proud of this, right? Because you said I worked alongside of those individuals, right? And we know there's a lot of people that work for them. And those right. people that work for them, you know, who, who they are was connected to being in that role, right? I have people to this day that don't know if I'm still doing Blue Flame, don't know if I'm still, if I'm working with Jay and Rock Nation. They don't, they don't know because I've done so many things, but, but I really prided myself on working alongside and giving just as much as I got back. Because those jobs were always, you know, those, those, the type of jobs that got you a lot of visibility. And so what you did with that visibility, and if I was I gonna run around and be the guy in the club yelling bad boy all the time, or was I gonna be blue flame? And and you and you know, like all of those artists that worked there, I know every artist I've, I've been in the studio, I helped, I did marketing for those cats, but they still consider me blue flame more than they consider me bad boy. When I yeah. when I came to the 20th anniversary that that concert, I was backstage. And when I tell you, every single person was like, oh, real blue flame, what right? And and so, and I think, and I was really proud of that because. Blue Flame didn't exist before I got there, right? It was called Bad Boy Marketing and Advertising. And when we did that retreat in the Hamptons, you know, I came up with the name Blue Flame. And Blue Flame still exists today. Um, and, and it's super, super successful. And, and I think what Dia and, and Erica and them did with that company um, took it to the next level. And that's what it's all about, man. Like just showing people who you are every time you show up. What's up guys, thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.